everyone, it's Abby. I'm finally getting started on my 1890s ball gown itself. I've really been procrastinating on this project because I hadn't wanted to cut into the really pretty silk. I think the skirt will go well itself, but I'm really dreading the bodice part. It involves a lot of draping and figuring out the right way to use the five yards of this silk I have. I only have five yards of the screenshot silk, so I need to be very careful. This is one of the fabrics I bought at the LA Fashion District a couple years ago. I had found a bunch of extant garment inspiration on Pinterest, as well as being inspired by some of the gowns I've seen from historical customers on Instagram. I really love the huge puff sleeves on the ball gowns, and I have fallen into scrolling through dresses so many times. So let's get started! I'm going to start with my favorite walking skirt pattern. I like this one for its fullness, and I know it fits well on less fabric compared to some of the large 1890s ball gown skirt patterns. If I had more fabric, I might be more inclined to try another pattern that uses a lot more. But as I know this one does what I want it to do with less fabric, Butterick 5970 is what I will be using. I bought an 1890s ball gown bodice pattern from Truly Victorian to use for the bodice itself. I love Truly Victorian patterns, so I'm excited to give this one a try. I have quite a few different fabrics that I might end up adding to various pieces depending on how much of the green shot silk I have. I will be using the light green poly chiffon for trim on the skirt and bodice. The rest will be lining or other trim. I want to use the gold silk as an accent, but I think I will be using that for the day bodice I'm planning to make to go with the skirt. I unfold my shot green silk, test how wide it is compared to my lining fabric, and lay it out to prepare to cut. I start with laying out the skirt pieces and pinning them in place with the front piece on the fold. You can see I'm trying to maximize my pattern pieces to fit in my fabric the best I can and add as much width as I can to the back for extra pleating space. I will also have to piece a little right at the corner bottom of the back skirt piece, but that's okay, piecing is period, and they did it all the time to conserve fabric. I cut out my front and back skirt pieces, adding 3 inches to the length as I've done before. As you can see, I pinned the side skirt pieces off camera, and I'm cutting them out here. I'm pinning and cutting out the pieced parts for the bottom corner of the back skirt pieces. I will hand sew those on later. I've pinned the placket and waistband pieces. I cut those pieces out. I 
I've pinned the front and back skirt pieces to doubled poly cotton that I will be using for the underlining. I cut those pieces out. I pinned the side skirt pieces to the doubled underlining and cut those out as well. I wanted something to stiffen the bottom 6 inches of the skirt. The pattern calls for flannel, and I've used various thicker fabrics for this in my other skirts, including flannel. This time I wanted something a little thinner, but still stiff. I had this lime poly silk left over from my Bridgerton dress. This is perfect to create some body around the hem of my ball gown skirt. Following the pattern, I measure 6 inches and trace out the interlining for each of the skirt pieces on doubled fabric. I cut those pieces out. Starting with the underlining on the front skirt piece, I line up and pin the stiff underlining to the bottom of all the pieces. I machine sew around all the interlining pieces to secure them. Now it's time to attach the underlining to the fashion fabric layer. I need them to act as one piece. I find the correct corresponding pieces and lay them with the lime interlining in between the two fabrics, hiding the lime part. I smooth and pin around the whole edge. Using long running stitches and a contrast thread, I hand based around the whole edge of the skirt piece, about a quarter inch from the edge so there's room for seam allowance. This takes a long time, but it's definitely worth not skipping this step as it helps the fabrics work as one, and you don't have to worry about pins falling out. I also went a bit extra and hand whipped the edge of this one. I wanted something to hand sew while sitting on the couch. I could have instead machine zigzag stitched or used my serger for the edges, just something to keep them from fraying. Off camera I hand pieced the corners onto the back skirt pieces. I've shown this process before on previous videos. I pinned the placket to the placket lining piece following the directions.
I machine sew that seam up. I pinned the back and side pieces together. I machine sew that seam up. I cut pockets from dark green cotton along the fold using a pocket pattern I created in a previous video. I wanted some facing pieces so the pockets hide better in the skirt. I pinned the top parts to doubled shot green silk and cut out. I folded under raw edges and pinned the facing to the cotton pocket. I hand whip stitched those in place using matching thread. I chose an olive color that seemed to match the changeable color the best. I pinned one side of the pocket to the side back seam of the skirt, about four inches down from the top. I pinned the other side of the pocket to the side front seam, four inches down. I sew the pocket on, leaving seam allowance at the top and bottom. And then I pinned up the rest of the seam, leaving space for the pocket. Now I machine sew the top part of the side seam first, moving the top of the pocket to the side so I can get right up to the edge. I had pinned the pocket bottom up as well, I machine sew that part now too. And now I sew up the bottom part of the seam making sure I line up with the other stitches so there's no gaps. I pin the front skirt seam up and machine sew these seams up off camera. I had cut the corner and trimmed the seams of the placket. I fold right sides out and press. I top stitch close to the edge around the outside of the placket. I always forget to leave a bit of space at the end so I seam rip where needed. I pinned the waistband to the lining and machine sew along the three edges. I pinned the placket to the back seam of the skirt and machine sew it in place. I pinned and machine sew the back seam up.
I press all my skirt seams flat. I press my pocket seam and make sure the pocket looks good and flat on the outside, pressing a bit there as well. I clip and press my placket. I fold under the raw edges and pin the placket lining in place. I hand whip stitch the lining down. I clip the seam allowances and corners of my waistband. I flip my waistband right side out and press. I press the other side from the placket and the skirt seam. I fold under raw edges and pin in place. I hand whip stitch that edge down. I wanted small darts on this skirt in the front like I've seen in other 1890s skirts, so I pencil the darts into the front side pieces, right in the middle at the top, and pin. I machine sew the darts up. I add twill tape from the top of the pocket up to the waist of the skirt to hold the weight of the pocket off the side seams. I place pins at the center front of the waistband and the skirt. I pin those together. Then I pin the waistband to the top of the skirt, stopping near the side back seam. Here is where I will be pleating all of the extra fabric down to fit into the waistband. I measure and figure out how wide the pleats need to be. Some are placed right on top of each other. I redo them until I'm happy with how they are working. I 
I machine sew the waistband to the waist of the skirt. I bought some olive green bias tape as I knew I would not have enough of the shot green silk to create a self bias binding. I decided to do the hem slightly different than the pattern calls for as I don't want the binding to show on the outside. I pinned the binding along the edge. I machine sew the binding a quarter inch from the edge. I fold the whole binding to the inside, making sure none is showing on the outside, and press. I pin the binding in place. I hand whip stitch the binding to the lining, only so it wouldn't show on the outside. I wanted to add a draped ruffle to the front of the skirt like I've seen from a few other examples. It will flow into a straight ruffle along the back. I started with hand rolling the polish chiffon hem all along the edge of my fabric. It's going to be difficult getting this to work, so I start with pinning the centers at the bottom front of the dress. I'm hand gathering the bottom and clipping it to the edge to get an even edge to happen. There might be a better way, but this was the one my brain came up with after noodling on it a bunch. Here I have a whole front ruffle gathered and clipped to the bottom hem of my dress. I measure and place pins at intervals how I want the ruffle to drape. I'm hand gathering these ruffles starting at the pins I've placed, gathering and pinning it to the skirt fabric at the same time. I hand sew along the gathering line to anchor the ruffle to the skirt. I trim the top excess off camera. I've cut and hemmed another set of ruffles for the back. I machine sew a gathering row into the top of the ruffle with loose bobbin stitches so it ruffles as I go. I line up those ruffles to the bottom hem edge of the back half of the skirt and pin along the top of the ruffles, resituating as needed.
I've made sure to finish the side edges of the ruffles, so all I now have to do is to attach them to each other. I use a tiny hand whip stitch and sew the front ruffle to the back ruffle on the wrong side. I hand stitch along the gathering line of the ruffle using a running back stitch to anchor the back ruffle to the skirt. To cover the raw edges, I bought this sage green velvet ribbon. I pin and hand stitch the ribbon in place on the top and bottom edges. I have a poly satin balayuse or dust ruffle that I created for my Edwardian ball gown, but I wanted to create a bit more ruffled one with cotton for this gown. You can see my other one here as I try to figure out how I want to create this one. Because of the train dragging on the ground a bit in the back, this saves the skirt from dust and debris, and you can remove the balayuse and wash it separately. I fold the green cotton in half. This is just simple quilting cotton from Joann's. I lay the skirt train on top and cut around it, leaving a bit for seam allowance. I fold my cotton in half again for four layers. I'm measuring out what size I can make the ruffles. I'm using my rotary cutter and cutting four inch strips to make my ruffles with. I machine sew strips together at the selvage edge. I machine sew a small hem into the bottom of the ruffles. I add two rows of gathering stitches to the tops of the ruffles. I pin and hand sew the first row of ruffles to line up with the edge of the large balayuse piece that I sewed up and hemmed off camera. These could be machine sewed on as well. I hand sew ribbon to hide the raw edges. I probably could have sewn the ruffle on upside down and flipped it over to hide them as well, but that just sounded like a lot of work, so I opted to do this instead. 
I hand sew the second layer of ruffles, just hiding the ribbon underneath. On to the third layer. The final top layer has to be tapered at the top to finish off the ruffle. I wrap the side raw edges with silk fabric and hand stitch in place. I use black bias tape that I had on hand to close off the top raw edges. And there we go, a finished value super roughly. I hand sew buttons to the underside of the skirt train. I hand sew buttonholes all along the top of the balayuse. It makes it easier to take off and wash, or use for another gown. I wanted to add some roses to the tops of the ruffles on the skirt, so I found these great velvet roses on Etsy. So many different sizes and colors to match my gown. I trim the stem bit off and melt the cut bit. I let it cool a bit and then use my thumb on the plastic to flatten it so the backer won't escape. I trim the smaller roses too. I sew pin backs to all the roses so I can add and remove them as needed. Makes for easier storing and I can switch out the decorations when I make the day bodice. And there we have it, a completed 1890s ball gown skirt. Thank you for joining me today as I made an 1890s ball gown skirt. Stay tuned for the making of the ball gown bodice to go with. I want to make a day bodice out of the scraps, but we'll see how much I have left after I make the ball gown bodice. I may instead make a contrasting bodice with elements of the green shot silk incorporated. I'm excited to continue with this project. If you liked this video and want to see more costume and sewing videos, remember to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing!